Now, that seems very nice and plausible and, and makes physical sense, except that we have a theorem, which is that in alternating transitive percolation, every convex set has probability one. That means that if you ask in alternating transitive percolation, will I get a diamond, a four element diamond as a convex set? The answer is yes. And the answer is yes for any finite suborder as a convex set. Say, so will I get this 10 to the 240 element causal set with all these causal relations? The answer is yes, with probability one. In fact, you'll get it infinitely many times with probability one. So in transitive percolation, if you just limit yourself to convex set questions or statements about the structure of the causal set that you grow, there's no discrimination possible at all. All the causal sets look exactly the same as far as the convex set questions are concerned, because the answer is always yes. So in transitive percolation, the beginning is an anchor without which covariant statements, such uh, the covariant statements of convex set um, inclusion have no, uh, they don't have any purchase. There's, not, there's no discriminating that you can do between one causal set generated by alternating transit percolation and another causal set generated by alternating transit percolation. They all look the same as far as the convex sets are concerned. And similarly to what we did with past finite causal sets, you can go covariant with all of this. You can construct a framework in which you never need to refer to the labels at all. You can grow causal sets in a way that doesn't refer to any particular labeling. And again, I'm going to, for, um, in view of time, I'm going to skip over that, um, that part and just end with these um, thoughts. So is, are there di viable dynamics for past infinite causal sets? And here I have to make a confession. I personally would like to kill them all off. <laughs> uh, I want to show that dynamics of past infinite causal sets don't produce any kind of useful, sensible cosmology because I abhor a physical infinity. And if the universe has an infinite past, there is a physical infinity already. It, we, one doesn't have to look or even ask or talk about spatial infinity. There's already a physical amount of stuff that's happened in the past. And that, uh, that yeah, that's, that runs counter to my, to my philosophical um, prejudices. Transitive percol and so here's a reason that that one might want to use to get rid of um, past infinite or say uh, argue that past infinite causal sets can't make sense. So transitive percolation is an important model in the whole CSG framework. There is an argument based on something called cosmic renormalization that Raphael Sorkin made that this CSG framework contains the possibility of self-tuning, a self-tuning um, cosmology where the bouncing um, picture of the universe of cycles um, holds, but each cycle is bigger and lasts longer than the one before. And there's a possibility of, of achieving um, solutions to the various fine tuning problems of, of standard cosmology, including that flatness problem that I mentioned. However, if we include past infinite causal sets, then transitive percolation has to be abandoned because it has no quasi-local covariant observables or physical statements that you can make in its past infinite guise. And if we don't have transitive percolation, then this argument of Sorkin's um, can't be made. However, it's an in, and the reason Stav and Bruno and I continue to work on it is that it's a super interesting structure. The various, uh, particularly in the, um, the part I didn't show you where 
we are exploring how to make um, the dynamics look uh, cover uh, intrinsically and fundamentally covariant, some very nice questions arise, which are fun um, and interesting to think about. So, so that although I'd like to get rid of them from a sort of yeah, philosophical point of view, from a sort of technical um, uh, point of view, then they're act actually quite fun to think about. Okay. And then finally, what about the quantum? So no one, I think, considers it likely that the universe is a single causal set. And all, everything that I've said so far has been completely classical. And I've been speaking as if the universe is a single causal set. And classical stochastic models, such as um, classical sequential growth models, and these models of, of growing past infinite causal sets, they're just warm warm-ups for the quantum case. And as I said, one of the ingredients for causal set theory is an approach to the problem of quantum gravity is a path integral. So the path integral is the basic framework for a quantum dynamics for causal sets. And the dynamics is given by a sum over histories, which is a sum over causal sets. And the question translates then into which causal sets are included in the sum over histories past finite or past infinite causal sets. And in some sense, the no boundary proposal comes in here again, because you could think of this, the conjecture that we only sum over past finite causal sets as some kind of no boundary proposal. It's, it's giving you an initial condition or some kind of state um, for, um, for the universe, for cosmology, for quantum cosmology. The interpretation of this path integral framework is a work in progress, but the same concept of event that I used in this talk as being physical statements that you can make about, uh, about the causal set is the same. That carries over into the quantum case in, within a path integral framework because the path integral is a species of measure theory. It's, it's a, a generalization of the kind of the, the concept of a classical stochastic process. So the question then, is the same question within the quantum context. Can convex set events make sense or are they useless? Um, um, and can only, or can only stem events which are anchored to a beginning make sense and be useful in a quantum dynamical model? And I'll end there and thanks for listening. In, in thinking about cosmology, uh, I'm sorry, in thinking about causality from these to a perspective causal sets and how we as humans view causality. If I understood the talk, and I may not have, we, we have this early verse in which there's a sort of discrete causal set percolating up into the smooth manifold that's the world we live in. And in this latter version of causal sets that did not have an ordering, if you impose this idea of quantum mechanics on the causal set, where you might have a probability that observe a particular ordering. Um, do you think, uh, is there any suggestion that different orderings of events in the early universe would create a smooth um, macro universe that had a different version of causality as viewed by us? Those are, well, I think you converged on a fantastic question there, which I have to say I don't know the answer to. So, how does sure, the sure. causal how does the causal order of continuum space time emerge from or relate to the microscopic order relation of the individual causal set histories that are part of the quantum sum over histories? That's how I'd rephrase mm -hmm. your question. And that's that's yes, it's perfect. And yeah, <laughs> that's a fantastic question. Um, we don't know the full answer because we don't have a working quantum sum over quantum right. sets. But because one might imagine the evolution it, of universes at the macro scale that had different physics in them, and perhaps the physics we're seeing in this argument might be anthropomorphic in a sense, is just the one that peaks of uh, in all the histories. Um, 
But again, without a working model of how to build a macro causality from micro causality, it's, that's highly speculative. Right. So here's one way that, it, so I'm going to describe, say something, some words, whether or not that's satisfactory, you know, I, I don't know, even know whether it's satisfactory to myself. So, but here are some words. So, so we, we already have a heuristic for how classical behavior or approximately classical behavior emerges from a quantum theory based on a pass integral. And it's the, it's the old idea that, that originated with Dirac very early on in 1933, was emphasized by Feynman and many others since that, that in the sum over histories, the histories which are close to the classical history mm -hmm. contribute and their con contribute to the to the path integral in a way that their contributions constructively interfere with each other, and that the uh, mm -hmm. the histories far away from a classical trajectory, tra classical history, their contributions are suppressed because their contributions cancel out each other. So there's destructive interference mm -hmm. between the non classical histories and constructive interference between the classical histories, and we make a prediction of classical behavior from that because of that. Now that's already very heuristic. So even in the continuum mm -hmm. where we think we understand quantum mechanics, that's already something of a heuristic, but it's very widely held and I believe has, is close to the truth. So in the causal set picture, the idea would be that there would be causal sets which all have the same continuum manifold as an approximation to them, a whole bunch of them, right? But it, mm -hmm. it maybe mm -hmm. huge, a huge number of them. And all of those which have the same continuum, continuum space-time as an approximation to them, they, their contributions constructively interfere. And we therefore predict that, that we predict that that particular continuum approximation is is an approximation to the, to what is really going on which is fundamentally quantum and and with all the caveats about mm -hmm. whether we understand with we really understand what's going on in the micro world so if that ha turns out to be the case then that might be that might be sufficient or satisfactory to say yes this macro description which is assuredly an approximation to what's going on, but this macro description with its continuum causal order given by the mm -hmm. light cones and uh, Lorentzian geometry, etc., that is a good approximation to this, this discrete, um, discrete theory in which there are only um, discrete space-time atoms and no continuum at all. Um, and the, the macro causal order emerges from the quantum one in that way. Okay, so those right. that, that's a sketch or based on something which is it, already very heuristic within within the uh, quantum theory. Of but it is, continuum. it is satisfactory. It is the direction oh, okay. that we would naturally go in. Um, but one can't help wonder what those other paths might look like. And to, to come up with a ridiculous, imagine uh, crystallizing a, a manifold in which, you know, uh, a boiling water created fire rather than fire creating boiling water. It's uh, absolutely absurd. 